And I'm going to be using a PowerPoint. Um, so if you can't read that, then come up closer, OK? Um, and if at any point you can't read it, feel free to come up closer, because there are some chairs up here that are closer. Um, I'm Liz Yates. I live in Austin. I'm a member of the Friends Meeting of Austin, and I've been a Quaker for about 40 years. And even before that, I was, um, I was a uh, pacifist. Um, I've always been against war. I've done a lot of things um, in my life, uh, a lot of actions of various different kinds. Um, I've written a lot about peace. Um, I am proud to say that I've been training people in nonviolence for a lot of years. But one of the things that I'm convinced of and that I've been doing all that time, in addition to, you know, actually I've only once been arrested uh, in a demonstration, which is pretty amazing because I've been in a lot of demonstrations. But um, I was arrested in Washington during the Vietnam War. Um, uh, for a prayer, for being at a prayer service, and I just, you know, if you want to, you know, if you want to ch challenge me, I think anybody should be able to have a prayer service across from the White House, you know. These are the Nixon years, and I got arrested with Dr. Spock, so I was pretty proud of that. Um, but um, all the time that I've been doing that, I've also been doing what the Friends Committee and National Legislation does, which is um, lobbying. Uh, and it's a different kind of lobbying, probably, than um, what you're used to hearing about. Um, we're not paid lobbyists. And uh, there is a staff. Um, for instance, Matt was on that wonderful staff, and he still is, uh, Matt Southworth. Uh, there's a staff that has. Uh, um, that does some of the lobbying, but increasingly, constituency lobbying has been the way to go, what we need to be doing. And let me tell you that Lockheed is hiring constituents to do lobbying now. They're paying people to organize in the constituencies. Um, and they're not just paying the congressmen, they're not just you know, they're not just giving the money to the congressmen, they're also paying organizers. So the point is that what I want to do tonight is talk to you and um, get an idea from you about um, what kind of lobbying you've done in the past and, uh, and what kind of lobbying you think you might like to do in the future. The neat thing about FCNL is it's, being do, it's done lobbying for years and years. And so um, I want to talk about citizen lobbying, speaking truth to power. Oops. Let's see if we can get this to go. There we go. I know a lot of you will say, why lobby? Why talk to that man who represents you in the House of Representatives? Why even bother to talk to our two senators? Um, one of whom is going to change. We don't know who that's going to be, who's going to come in. Um, why even bother to build a relationship with those people? So that's one of the things we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the ladder of engagement, which is how you go from one thing to another, uh, not necessarily in any order, um, and, uh, and get your message across. We'll talk about writing an effective message. We'll talk about lobby visits. And we'll talk about building relationships with your member of Congress. When we're talking about this, um, we're going to talk about it from the point of view of some really powerful values, some things that you need to learn to do in order to do this work. And probably most of you know how to do them because you do them in your everyday life, in your relationships with people. Um, listening, respectful dialogue, finding common ground, and speaking with sincerity. Because you're building a relationship. And an interesting experience. I do serve on the board of Texas Impact. 
um, which is a statewide faith-based lobby. Um, and it's, uh, they had their board meeting today. At the last board meeting in September, one of the pastors uh, who serves on the board said, you know, I had a real interesting disconnect um, and I realized something when we were working with the legislature last year. You know, this kind of lobbying we need to be doing with our own Texas legislature too. So, um, so I'm going to talk to you from that perspective too. He said, you know, I don't think we're being completely effective when we put on our t-shirts and we go outside the Capitol and we demonstrate and shout loudly for what we believe in. And then we go as a pile of 20 people and try to get into the representative's office and, um, or the senator's office and tell them what we think with our t-shirts on and our, and our, you know, our adamants I have an attitude that we're right. Actually, he said, I think there's something wrong with that, and I want us to explore that. Well, this is, this is what this is all about. We need to build relationships, not tell people that we're right. And I think that that is a different way of looking at lobbying. So this... Um, this is uh, Welling Hall, who's somebody I know. She's a professor at Earlham College, which is a Quaker college in Indiana. And um, she spent a year in, um, in Washington working with her congressman, working for a congressman's office. She's, she does peace and justice, peace studies at Earlham College. Um, and it, what she concluded was the best policy in the world isn't going anywhere unless it's supported by related human relationships. And she worked through a good deal of um, Clean Air Act, uh, Act um, legislation while she was there, environmental legislation, a little bit at a time until there really is a whole group of senators who are supporting a Clean Air Act that hasn't gotten, that hasn't been passed yet. It sometimes takes years and years for a piece of legislation to really go, a good piece of legislation to really go through the Senate, but it get, gets more and more support every year. So, In 2010, a study was, can you still hear? Okay. Um, in 2010, they did a study of congressional staff, and I don't know that you can read all of that, but um, they, they found out that in order to influence a legislator who's undecided on an issue, okay, this is not somebody who's very clearly decided on an issue, but very often the, the Congress people have so many issues to learn about and decide about um, that very often they, they go in undecided about an issue, okay. But if they're undecided about an issue, um, they can, they, the visits from lobbyists, actual lobbyists, those are paid lobbyists who work for companies, um, visits from lobbyists will only influence them 8% of the time. Whereas visits from in-person lobby visits from constituents will change their mind 46% of the time. So. The more effective thing to do is to be a constituent lobbyist. Now, you can also see that um, individual postal letters or individual email messages have a real effect. 20% of the time, their mind will be changed by that. And that's, that's pretty effective if you think about the effect of this. So, um, phone calls, 14% uh, of the time. Now, phone calls are most effective just before a vote. You're always effective if you, if you call before a vote, especially if you put your, if you've sent the letter ahead of time. If you told your congressperson what you think ahead of time, and then you call in addition. It's, it, um, it's amazing, some of the congressional um, staff will tell you that um, they sometimes don't hear anything about an issue. 
And so if you send one letter, you're, you're having an influence. If you send 10 letters, you're having even more of an influence. A um, hundred letters is really, they rarely get that much information on any one thing. So um, I want, if you have a question, please stop and ask it. Um, I'll be happy to answer them. So, uh, so th this is coming from the Congressional Management Foundation, this information. It's not coming from FCNL. And it's, um, it's really important to realize that we can have an effect. Okay. Let's let's uh, we're going to talk about how to write a letter, but I think it would be a good idea to talk about postal letters as opposed to email messages. They're almost the same these days. And one of the problems with it, a postal letter is that they're still going through a place in Ohio where they get irradiated um, to make sure that they don't have uh, um, something in them. So very often they end up, a letter will end up um, in a congressman's office garbled. And, uh, and so they can't read them. Faxes work well if you've had access to a fax machine and that's easier for you than an email, then you can use faxes. But there's no real difference between an email message these days and um, a postal letter. Now those are individualized, and what we mean by individualized is if you get a, a message from Move On and you just sign on to it, then that does not have the effect that an individualized letter has um, or an individualized email. So it's a matter of you can use the systems that FCNL has a system, but a lot of groups have systems. I'll show you something about FCNL system a little later. It's really easy to use, and they give you some words to help you. Your words don't need to be totally different than what they're suggesting, but you do need to personalize it in some ways. So individualized letters, are emails rather, are probably the best way. The other thing that we're discovering is from the, from the staff, that we talk to, the congressional staff that we talk to, that more and more is being done in front of the computer, that our legislators are reading on the computer or their phones, um, their smartphones, and um, that they're not looking at paper anymore. So that if you send a postal letter, most often somebody in the office, one of the staff, is going to scan it and make it into a, a digital um, piece of, uh, of information. And if the congressman reads it at all, or the staff reads it at all, they're going to be doing it on a, on, a, on a screen. So starting, you know, with an email is probably a good idea in that case. Uh, they will count these in some cases. Sometimes it's really, you just need to be clear about what your point is, what you're talking about, and we'll talk about that a little bit in a minute. Um, but um, they will just simply make a count. So they'll have 150 for four and um, 100 against, um, maybe, okay? So, um, but at other times, as I say, maybe they didn't get any letters about that. Or maybe it's maybe what you're asking for is for them to look into something um, that they've never thought of looking into before, and then your letter may be the only one, um, and it may be treated very differently. It, may, it won't be counted. It'll be something that a staff member will be will be set to do. Um, they'll be sent to do the research that's necessary. So, yeah. Is this just for the you know, city of Waco or, or McLean County or for the sports state of Texas? What I'm talking about is relating to anybody that you've, re you've elected, okay? okay. Um, and, and, and some people that get appointed, too. Um, 
all of these people have to get elected or appointed on the basis of what they do. And most of them, I mean, we live in a very conservative state. And even coming from Austin, I'll tell you, my congressman, McCall, um, is Michael McCall, is just as conservative as your congressman. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we got gerrymandered in Austin a couple of years ago. We're now divided into four different congr congressional um, uh, districts. And my district is a long, skinny district that goes all the way almost into Houston. Um, and takes in a lot of Williamson County, which is very conservative. And so Michael McCall is probably in there for life, and he's real. He's a real, you know. Anyway, never mind. Um, I don't want to use those words. I have to find it difficult. I find it difficult to write to him, but I do, because there are some things in which we can we can talk to each other about. So. Um, so anyhow, um, but I'm talking about anybody that you want to lobby with, whether, you know, I don't know who your state represented. I didn't look up Waco state representative. I spent a little time looking at Flores, and I'll show you what I saw um, in a minute. But the fact is that um, your state representatives, your state senators, um, I'm talking about whoever it is that you want to talk to. Um, OK? Does that help? Yeah. The um, fact is that, that um, I just heard somebody from the Tribune. From the does anybody has the, has anybody look at the um, the Tribune online, the, the newspaper that does the, a really good job of reporting on what's going on on the state level? Um, and he was saying, you know, he meets with a lot of these representatives, and they all of them go in there, whether we agree with them or not, thinking that they can do something. And they have good intentions. They may not be the intentions that we want, but they have good intentions. And they, a lot of the new ones are really frustrated about what they, what they haven't been able to do. So um, we're going to have an almost completely new legislature again. Um, we'll have, we'll have as, they, as they say, freshmen. The majority of the legislature, legislature this year in Texas when we, in 2000, uh, after the elections, um, the majority of the of the legislature will be either freshmen or sophomores, um, and almost all of the old, older, experienced people will be gone for one reason or another between gerrymandering and um, the fact that people have left. Um, a lot of people have left, and that the you know there's been a general swing in in. Um, with the re, with the re um, with the redistricting, yeah. Uh, with regard to uh, uh, Representative Doc Anderson and our Texas Senator Birdwell, our Representative and Senator, and also Congressman Flores, uh, I would suggest that if you, uh, if you go by and meet, if they come to town and they have some sort of meeting, go by and meet them and make small talk. If they have a fundraiser, put ten dollars in the pot, but make sure you fill out the card that has your name on it. Then, when you like them, say what a pleasure it was to meet them, to go to their fundraiser, and whatever, and then make your point. And that will guarantee some sort of letter coming back from them. Thank you. Would you like to come up and teach the rest of this for me? <laughs> I think you just explained what is up here right now. Um, you, there's a lot of ways in which we need to make this kind of a relationship, that we have to make this kind of a relationship. We can send letters, emails, and faxes. And faxes. We can send messages as a group. This group can send a message. Um, we can engage with the media, do op-ed pieces if we can in the local paper, um, write letters to the editor. We can attend a public event, and that's really a very good thing to do, especially with your representative or your, um, your representative both on the state and the, and the local level. Um, you can meet with a staffer. Most of the time when you make an appointment with these folks, 
you're going to for to talk to them you're going to meet with the staff and then you can meet face to face with the legislator themselves those are all ways they're not necessarily in order the latter the linear ladder example is one of the ways we like to talk about it because the top one having a relationship is really where we're going but you don't need to do all of those steps and you don't need to do them in that order so but you will probably have to do them over and over again um, some of them over and over again so let's start with writing a message um, what one of the most important things you can do in a message is identify yourself now, that doesn't mean that um, you're going to give them your biography, but um, you should tell them something about yourself, something that identifies yourself with your community. Um, especially, you want to identify yourself if you're writing, representing a group. Uh, that You want to say thanks for past actions. Sometimes that's a little difficult, and we'll go, we'll go through um, how you can find out what their past actions are. You want to focus on one or at most two issues. You do not want to write a letter that says, um, that says, you know, I want you to do this, 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 and this. Give them a laundry list of things. You want to be polite and positive. You want to make a clear ask and mention a bill number, if possible. And again, the research on this, I can show you where, the, where you can go um, for that kind of research. You want to use a few concise facts, but I'm going to repeat this over and over again. You do not need to be an expert. You do not need to be an expert on the issue in order to say what your truth is. And you're going to ask for a commitment and a, and a reply. Okay. So that's what you need to do for a letter. One of the most effective ways of writing, sitting down to write a letter, what I do is I go to this website, which is really easy, www.fcnl.org. Now I go to that website for national things. Um, I would go to uh, Texas Impact's website for, um, for something that had to do with state, um, state policy. Okay, and that's texasimpact.org, and I'll give you both of those. Um, although, I will say that there are other excellent websites. These are not the only places that you can go. Um, and I'm going to give you, and incidentally, I'm going to give, I think I have just about enough for at least every family to take away. Um, I have a newsletter that, that outlines all of this, and I can sh tell you where to get the newsletter online if you don't get a copy here tonight. So a lot of it is repeated in there, so you don't have to take care of this. But FCNL's website has terrific um, tools for working with Congress. Now, this is just part of their take action part of the website. There are other parts of the take action part, but there's your representative, Bill Flores, OK? And what you have here is some of his bio. His residence is in Byer, Brian, Brian. He's um, a businessman. Uh, he's, he has no prior elected office. Not surprising. Um, there's what his education is. Uh, there's his birth date, 54 he was born. He was born in, War in Warren, Wyoming. He's a Baptist. Uh, he, his last election, he won by 62%, and the, his major opponent was Ted Edwards. Now, you probably knew most of that information. Um, but if you go further on the website, and this is a website that this is a service that FCNL has that other groups have, too. Has anybody ever used a website like this? OK. Um, the, that, these are the committees that he, he's on. He's on budget, he's on natural resources, and veterans affairs. I'm sorry this isn't large enough so that you could read it back there. But that's the piece of information you want to know. This is his staff. That's the names of all of his staff people. 
And there's also a contact thing here where you can contact each of these people. So there's a button for contact. So this is a really useful thing. A lot of these people serve in two different capacities. One of his staff people is his chief of staff. His, his name is Jeff Morehouse. Has anyone talked to Jeff Morehouse in this room? Okay. Well, he's a man you want to get in touch with. I assume he's a man. Um, but he's a man you want to get in touch with, okay? And this is information. Um, when I do this with some groups and we have more time and we have an internet connection, I will, we will put Jeff Morehouse um, staff of Flores into into the website and into the into the Google or Bing or whatever you use, and you'll come up with information about him too. You, you can find out what he did before. He probably works for some worked for some other congressman before, or he had some sort of political um, appointment of a job here in the in the state legislature or or something. You'll, you can find out more about him. It's a really wonderful thing to do this. And then you can talk to him better, too. These are the most recent votes that Flores has done. And if you go all the way down here to last February, you'll find that he voted with us once. Okay? Bet you didn't know that. He voted against to cut funding for the F-35 second engine, which was a pretty big... Um, cut of funding, and uh, and also, um, as I remember it, and I'm not clear about this, but you can look it up, I think it was something that was falling out of the air on, on a regular basis. They couldn't get it to work, and they were spending billions of dollars on it, um, and they finally decided that uh, they would cut that particular project. It probably was not something being built in Texas. Um, it was probably being built somewhere else. It certainly wasn't something being built in the Waco area. But so. that's where you're gonna, what you can do. That's what you can thank him for. The last button on those buttons up on the top is tells you where he's gotten his major con his PAC contributions from. Okay, and here you'll see you see all of the most recent PAC contributions. They're listed here with the, the largest one, I think, at the top. I'm not sure. I can't, I can't even see that. But you can see his PAC contributions. And then you can go and look up who's giving him the money and what they're, what they're doing, what they're building. You can really better understand why he's voting the way he's voting. Um, so, um, so this is all really easy to access on the FCNL website. Um, undertake action. Okay. So, okay. Can everybody read that letter from where you're sitting? Okay. I want you to read the letter thinking of yourself as a staff in Flores' office. Okay. And what are you, what are you going to do? Well, how do you feel about this letter? What are you going to do with this letter? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what, what do you find that's a problem with this letter? Confrontational? Um, he deals with a number of issues there, um, whoever kind of angry is. Um, Uh, he's mixing up things in a way that is not real helpful. Okay, can everybody read this one? I know the print is getting smaller. Again, if you're a staff in a congressional office, Okay. It's a little better, huh? A little better. They still got more things in there than more stuff than you really want to be able to deal with. 
Okay. Specific ads. No specific ads. No specific ads. Okay. Um, maybe a little too much information, <laughs> but unnecessary information. Yeah. Yeah. Several bill numbers, I think. What about that one? Okay. Let me. Re shall I read this one to you? I'm a voter in the great city of Waco. My children attend Cedar Ridge Elementary School, where I'm the head of the PTA, and I'm a member of First United Methodist Church. I made this up. I greatly appreciate that you voted to cut funding for the F-35 second engine. As Congress looks for ways to reduce the federal budget deficit, please support cutting Pentagon spending by $1 trillion over the next 10 years, as was recommended by the Sustainable Defense Task Force. While our states and cities are cutting back services, our country is continuing to pour money into war and military strategies that are not making us safer. Cutting the production of faulty equipment that does not assist our troops will save money that could be used domestically for job development. Please speak with your colleagues and urge them to recommend this cut. Please me let me know what you will be doing to ensure continued funds for human services by cutting the Pentagon budget. Sincerely concerned citizen, Waco, Texas. Okay. He's identified himself, um, or she's identified herself. You have some information in there. Now, I would actually I think I would cite the um, Sustainable Defense Task Force where that could be found by citing an internet um, URL, and you could look that up pretty easily. Uh, that's a report that was done by a coalition group, um, not particularly a liberal group. It, it had a lot of uh, military on it. So it was the military themselves talking about this, which is why it's a valuable thing to cite. Um, and it, in fact, this is, FCNL sends out a weekly um, uh, action alert um, that you can get by going on the website and asking for it. And this is still what they're working on, um, Pentagon, because the Congress, before the recess, um, put off making the decision about how to cut the buddy, budget, if you remember. But they did commit themselves to, to uh, cutting Pentagon um, spending. And now they need to be held to it. Uh, so we're still working on this issue. And the one that I got just as I was uh, on my phone, just as I was coming up here, um, is the action alert for this week is about this issue again. And I can you. You can use the website, or I can tell you more about how how to phrase it. Because what you need to do then is, and this is a different. Um, I didn't redo this slide, but um, but you will find that you can go into a place, the same area that you um, went into to look at what Flores has done in the past and and his bio and all of that. That same area, you can, you, there's a place to compose a message. And they will give you some wording, but you can put it in all of your own words. And this will get to your, to your legislator um, in a plain vanilla way where it will not be obvious in any way, shape, or form that, there's, that you've done this through a system like this, that you've had any suggested language um, or anything like that. And I do this on a regular basis. Now, what I have done is picked specific issues with each of my Congress people. And I've done that on the basis of what committees they serve on and what issues they're likely to be able to have an effect on. And sometimes it's not the favorite issue that I would like to be working on. But um, for instance, with uh, Cornyn, we've had an ongoing discussion about the Pentagon budget. Uh, you know, I write him one thing, and he writes me back irrelevant things very often. But occasionally, I can tell that a staff member has looked at my 
letter because the letter that comes back makes more sense. It's more directly addresses the point that I've made. It, it talks about a specific bill or a specific issue in a different way. So I'm building a relationship with Cornyn. I've been to visit his aides about four or five times now, visit with his staff rather, about four or five times. And the interesting thing is each time I go to visit the staff in Cornyn's office, I'm going to visit the person who deals with military affairs, and they're usually recently back from Iraq or Afghanistan. And we usually find that we have a lot of agreement with each other. And um, they usually come away from the meeting saying, FCNL has something that I, some things that I want to bring before the, before the senator, which is interesting. The other thing is that um, I haven't followed up on any of those specific people, but what FCNL has found in the past is that staff move around. They don't spend more than about a year with a, with a congressman or a senator. They always want to move around and go up because very often it's hard to go up in, the, in that particular office. And um, sometimes they'll choose a much more liberal person the next time because they really, they'll find that they don't agree with somebody like Cornyn as much as they thought that they were going to. And of course they're looking to increase their um, visibility. A lot of them are looking to go into policy or, po or politics in some way. And so they're going to do, they're going to get jobs that are going to help them in that. But um, it's really, it's really instructive. So you're building a relationship with that staff member too, and we're going to we're going to talk next about um, before we talk about doing a visit. Let's talk about what happens to your message. There's no me difference between written and email messages. Of course, email messages are written, but I I should change that. They do tally some of them, as I've said before. Um, Personalized messages are treated differently than something that comes clearly as part of a, almost a petition kind of thing, although you can do that too. It really, you know, I always think whatever you get comes before you that you really agree with, you should do. So, um, and brief messages with clear asks are easier to deal with. That last letter could be put in a pile at least. It could be a yes or a no on a vote. Um, it could be, it, it's got a clear sense of what you're asking for, and it asks for a response. So um, are there questions about writing letters before I go on? Do, do you think you weaken your message if you write on a whole bunch of different issues all the time? Separate letters, but on different issues all the time? I think you probably get identified as a person who, um, who's not, who's who's doing a, you know, who's not as serious about the issue as you as you might be, um, because you're doing so many different issues. Um, but you know, I mean, who knows what works um, with these folks. Um, it's probably a better idea to pick one issue and, um, and go through with it. Um, and one of the things is, when I say you don't need to be an expert on it, you don't need to be an expert, but the more that you can lead a staff person to, in, to good information, you're giving them a gift by, by giving them a URL or something that they can use then in the course of their work because they're going, they're running around for the congressman on a lot of different issues, believe me, um, and they're having to respond to things. If they have a piece of information that's a response to something, um, then that makes their life easier. So, um, so, you know, it's up to you, but I think you're better off to pick one issue or two issues at the very most. Um, and so many of these issues relate to each other. I mean, they, they really do. You cannot talk about ending war and, uh, and not talk about the environment at this point. Um, they really do relate to each other. Yes. Uh, Liz, uh, at times, 
when there's been important votes you know, coming up, we had a letter that we've all signed you know, as a group, and so FedEx came to his office. Is that uh, a good strategy, or is it fair to everybody to do it individually? And our thought was, if we're all together, you know, it's an opportunity for everybody to participate and uh, sign the letter. What's your feeling about that? It's, it's certainly a good idea if, you, if, you're, if everybody isn't going to write a letter. But a better idea would be to have a, a ream of paper and have everybody sit down and write something and sign it and also identify themselves. Because the fact is that, that um, I suspect there are people here for, who have very different backgrounds and do di very different work. Um, and, uh, and that helps the congressman know who is or isn't going to vote for them. Um, and uh, they, ha they have to get votes in the end. They have to, you know, they, they really do. And so you, you, and some of you may actually have some relationship, if, even if it's, you know, uh, what, six degrees of uh, separation or whatever it is, um, if you have any you know, if you if your son or daughter went to school with their kids, or um, uh, you were part of something that they did at church, at a church, or you you're a Baptist also, mention that. So that's that's really important. It's better if you write individual letters. But if it, obviously everybody in this room, if we walk away tonight, not everybody in this room is going to write a letter, and so. The group letter is a good thing, too. Now, there are times when it's really good to have a group letter. And that's when you you can get a lot of people who will identify, who are, who are leaders in the community who are willing to sign on to a letter. So were this group to want to go out and get um, a number of the pastors in town, if you could, on an issue, um, and a number of the city, people in city government, um, and a number of people at the university, um, then that kind of group statement can be really useful. But, it, but individual letters are the best thing to go. So um, before we move on to the visit, other questions about letters? I'm not going to cover op-eds because we don't have time, but there's a lot of good information on the websites um, about op-eds. They are very, they're very good if you can get them into the paper. And letters to the editor. When I say op-eds, I think letters to the editor are easier for us to write. Um, but if you can get an op-ed in, if you're a good writer, um, the paper is usually looking for that. Newspapers these days, they don't get that much stuff. They don't have, they don't have that much staff. And they're, they're looking for people who write well. Especially if you, um, if you cannot, you can talk to their editorial department. Have you guys had any letters to the editor printed? Um, you've had letters to the editor printed. Do you keep a, Do you keep them? Um, do you keep them uh, in a folder for the group? We have. It's a good idea to do because that will help you um, to understand where you've been and and uh, and, it's, and it's something you can bring with you if you go to visit. Um, a legislator, but also if you mention a legislator's name in, in a piece in the newspaper, no matter what it is, they will clip it. Um, they have services that do the clipping for them. If their name gets mentioned um, as supporting something or not supporting something, it's going to arrive on their desk. Um, it's going to go in their folder. And so that's one of the good ways to get their to get their um, attention um, is to get something in the newspaper, and especially if they've um, they've said something about it, and the newspaper is reported the the reported that the newspaper is likely to print your letter. So um, so have, do people have people done that before? Have you mentioned Flores's name, for instance? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. I go on to the lobby visit? I don't know how we're doing on time. I hope we're doing OK. Um, yeah, OK. Um, a lobby visit is, is um, 
the first thing you need to think about is um, making an appointment. And one of the first things you need to think about when you make an appointment is, obviously, most of you can't go to Washington to visit your congressman most of the time. But they are back here very often. Um, and as you say, you can visit them in the crowd, but you can also make an appointment. You have an office right here in Waco um, for Flores. He has an office right here. And I'm, I have his address, the address. Um, you want to have a specific ask. You really want to want to focus on something. And if it's something you've been writing about, that's even better. But if it's something, you know, something specific that you haven't written about can come up too. Um, you want to do your home, your research. You want to gather a group and you want to meet before you go into the office. And I don't mean just before you go into the office. You probably want to meet and strategize earlier. Um, you want to present yourselves respectfully, and you want to make sure that you plan follow-up because you would be much more effective if you plan follow-up. So making an appointment. The home district is really just as good as Washington. Um, you really can be effective in the home district. It's a matter of figuring out which of the staff to visit with in the home district. And making their friends with them is really important because if you want to get something to the congressman, they send these pouches that don't go and get irradiated in Ohio. So if you want to get something there quick, they'll often send it for you. Um, the woman who answers the phone, and I'm going to guess it's a woman, it could be a guy, um, it could be a man, but um, the person who answers the phone is really one of the most important people. You want to make friends with her or him, and you want, because they're the ones who know how to work work their own systems. Um, you probably aren't going to get to meet with, even with Flores, um, you certainly probably won't get to meet with Cornyn or, uh, well, Hutchinson's on her way out. She might meet with you just to say goodbye. Um, but, uh, she, the, but you're probably going to meet with a staff member, and that's okay because those staff members often know more about the issues um, and can do more in some ways than the congressmen themselves. And they're certainly going to have more time. Um, the scheduler is, is key, and that's often the person who answers the phone. Um, getting to know them is, is really good. And some, when you get to the Senate level, you get different people who are schedulers. They have these handlers, basically, um, who plan every five minutes for them. Their lives are interesting. I, I couldn't imagine you doing it. Ask for a sem a, the staff member who works on your issue, and you can tell that from that list that you can look up. And be flexible on time and place. It may be that the congressman will meet with you if you're willing to go and meet with him before he's going to do a speech somewhere. Um, or if you're willing to meet with him um, meet with him in his office at a, an unusual time, like a Saturday morning or something like that. Uh, so you need to be somewhat flexible. Um, again, so who are you talk, might you talk to? And I'm just using Flores as an example, but that's his address of his office. So you guys know where that is better than I do. Um, and that's the list again of his uh, of his staff members. Now those are the Washington staff members, but you can find out who the Waco staff members are fairly easily. You want to focus on one issue at a time. You really don't want to go into into a meeting on two issues um, at the same time. That doesn't mean that if you're talking about cutting um, uh, Pentagon funding. You can't say that that might bring, that might give us money for human services. I mean, you know, that, that kind of relationship is okay. Choose something that has legislation pending. You really don't want to be asking him to, um, to do something that he really can't do, that, it, that he can do five years from now. On the other hand, ask can be different because sometimes you're asking for something in the future. Um, and we, we'll go over that. You don't need to know everything. That's another thing. A lot of people hesitate to do these visits because they don't feel they know enough. And you do not need to know everything. You can find references. And the people at FCNL 
are really willing to follow up on your visit, if you let them know that you visited Flores and he and his staff is interested in knowing something about something, some issue, then he's going to be, then, then they're going to be right on because they cannot get in to see those people the way their constituents can get in to see them. Um, they can't even get in to see the staff most of the time. They deal with staff who are, who are staffing committees more than they do the staff of the Congress people. Your ask, it can be to sponsor your proposal. It can be to co-sponsor a bill. Sometimes there's a bill that you might want them to co-sponsor. It's to take the lead in a funding initiative, to vote against or for a bill in committee. They vote in their committees as well as voting on the floor. It's to speak publicly on a topic. Um, there may be, maybe you want to ask Flores to speak as to why he cut the, the F-35 or whatever it was, um, and, or to hold a hearing. That's, those are the variety of asks. You want to do your homework, you want to know their voting record, and you, want to, you don't want to ask them to co-sponsor or vote for something that they're definitely going to vote for already. I mean, you don't want to waste the time um, doing that. Uh, you want to say thank you for something when you, you want to prepare that. You want to identify a few talking points. You're not going to have a long time you need to be clear as to what you're going to say. And you want to create a one-page summary of what you're going to say, of what your ask is, the elevator speech version of it, um, that you can leave with them after you, when your group leaves. And you should include the contact information for your group on that page. So, um, you know, can it be two pages both sides of a page, that's fine too, but you should include the contact information. So you're leaving something concrete. Visiting groups of six or less, it's really better. And that goes for the state as well as the, um, as well as our, uh, our national representatives. Because the fact is that more than six people, it, it's too crowded in most of the offices that they have. Build a coalition of the unexpected. Can you get a variety of people to go? A business person, a professional, a doctor, um, a student, a nun, um, or a, a, some sort of uh, religious representative? Um, build a coalition of the unexpected to go together, because that will be more influential. Practice. Um, the leaflet I'm going to uh, give you there on, on the FCNL website, you'll find an outline of how to practice. Um, pra you can do a little role play, which one of you um, is the legislator. And if we had time, we'd do that here. And make sure that, the, the, that you assign jobs so that everybody isn't trying to do everything. You need a group leader who introduces the group and runs the meeting as much as they can with the, most of these folks want to run the meeting for you. Um, that prepares the talking points and makes sure the ask is asked clearly and often. Um, a note taker so that you can follow up later and decide what you did and what you want to communicate about. And others is needed. You might want to take along an expert. If you can find an expert, then take them along, who's also a constituent. Um, you might want to assign somebody to ask specific questions, some people to ask specific questions. Present yourself respectfully, introduce yourselves and your topic, repeat the ask several times, ask questions, gather information, because that'll help you to follow up and also to decide where you're going to take the issue. Um, ask what the position is of the congressman or the senator, or the state legislator. Um, go in, don't assume that you know what the position is. Um, ask those questions and write down what they say so that you can be sure that you can remember it. <coughs> Meetings can be from be eight to 30 minutes. That's just an estimate. Um, I've spent longer than 30 minutes with a staff person. 
uh, they get interested and um, and they're pretty tightly booked, but sometimes they'll spend longer with you because they get interested in what you're talking about. You don't need to be an expert. Keep it simple. Don't try to answer questions that you don't know the answer to. Tell them that you'll find out and let them know. You'll let them know where to get that answer. Um, never burn a bridge. Try not to get angry. Um, it's really important not to get ang so angry that you can't listen. Uh, sometimes they'll say, I mean, I had a young woman in, um, in Hutchinson's office who knew absolutely nothing about the environment. And I was speaking, uh, we went specifically to talk about the environment. They sent the most junior of the staff to meet with us. Um, and uh, it, was, it was embarrassing what some of the things that she was saying. But we all held it together and didn't say, you're absolutely wrong, or, you know, uh, <laughs> you, you got to be kidding, <laughs> which is what was going through my mind. Um, she didn't know the first thing about it, and she didn't seem to be interested. She wanted to tell us what she thought. And it was, it, you know, she wasn't being a very, she wasn't being very professional. But um, don't oppose. Try to connect. It's always better to connect. It's hard to do. It's some ways harder than going in with your t-shirt and being, being uh, advocating for something. Provide a fact sheet that summarizes your key points and include the contact information. Um, clarify uh, the follow-up. Say, you know, we really want to hear from you as to what you're going to do on this issue, and we're going to be calling you and supplying you with this information. Um, will you call us when, you, when the vote has happened and let us know what happened? Or, or will you write to us? Um, and here's the address that you should write to. Uh, you want to ask them to follow up, too. Um, ask for their business card and give them yours. I've never been to a meeting with a congressman where the staff didn't give you their business card. It's the first thing, basically. Um, but uh, if they haven't, you can ask for it. And consider taking a picture with a member of Congress. They like it when they, you take their, your picture with them. And you can, usually get, you can usually bring that picture back home and get it printed in the paper, um, which gives you another time to say, you know, you can get a little article in saying this group went and visited Congressman so with so and so, and you know we had this picture taken, and the paper will very often print that kind of thing. So it's a really good idea. I mean, some of those guys I wouldn't, don't really want to have my picture taken with, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> so even if you meet with a staff person, it's possible the congressman will um, or congresswoman will will be willing to come and have a picture taken. Because uh, that only takes a couple of minutes for them to do, and they don't have to be faced with the issue at that point. So, write a thank you note, repeating your ask. Provide additional information if you said you would. Um, and follow their actions and thank them if they do what, they, what you asked. And if you contact FCNL, um, and let them know what happened and thank them for the resources, then sometimes they're able to pick up on something. That you may be working on something that they are actually working on and you don't know that. And, um, and what you found out from, their, from your congressman gives them an extra bit of information that they, they can follow up on. And again, the voting records um, are a really important thing to look at. And what you're trying to do is build a relationship. So these are the questions I have for you. And um, I guess what I'd like you to do is just quickly um, turn to the person next to you. And uh, if you were to consider what your next action would be, who would you contact, when, 
who would be good to bring along, and where can you find the resources to support you? Okay, so um, I just want you to talk quickly for about two minutes with the person across from you, next to you. Um, uh, be sure to share your name if you don't know names, and then we'll come back and talk about it for a minute. So just for two minutes or so. Anybody who's anybody who's going to leave, you want might want to take one of these newsletters. Yeah, I'm going to start. There you go. Pass them around, and I'll get some more.